Right, hello everybody. Welcome back to Drive Time Series 2, Episode 4. Yes, number 4. And we have uh, a repeat guest, actually. You may remember our good friend Carl Bartman here, the, a.k.a. Yeah. The Box. Of course, you joined us a couple of years ago during COVID, didn't you, Carl? Yeah, I did. It was one of the first ones. I'm, I'm shocked I've been asked back. It's very nice. Hope everybody's been okay over the last couple of years, and we're, we're glad to be back. Well, look, as as I said before, this is open to everybody. So if you are watching this and think, actually, I want to have a, a little interview like this, please do get in touch with me. Uh, no, it's just, it is a, for absolutely everybody, whether you're a, you're a driver, a mechanic, or whether you're a team owner, whether you're just a fan, we want to hear from you. We want to know what makes the entire UK and world population tick for motorsport. Now, of course, uh, this time around, we do have five questions, but we do want to find out about our guests as much as possible. So for Carl, the head Fox Barton, for those who don't know, Carl, what is your involvement in motorsport? Okay, been involved in motorsport um, about the last 25 to 30 years now. It's been a long, <laughs> long time. Um, so originally around the pack um, in the beginning with uh, dad, uh, made me follow Formula Ford from a very young age. Uh, got educated really well into that. Um, went through the football phase as we all do in the teenage years and then went off and had a, a music career. Um, which was uh, kind of a crazy ride, which is kind of the things I do nowadays for my day job, um, doing teaching and things like that. And as a natural spin-off for that, I now help motorsport students make their break into motorsport. So I, I write and assess courses. I'm qualified to do that. And I do that tend to be across music, tech and motorsport. And my involvement with Ian, I, I'm sure that Ian would say this in a, a much yeah. different way than I would. But I, I tend to fix things that don't necessarily work in paddocks. I think you've seen that first hand. If, if there's a problem and solution, I can normally find it. So uh, I do get a lot of teams phoning me up saying either, you know, somebody's not here or something like that and it's just a case of uh, ad hoc but uh, obsessed with motorsport and I've been ever since an early age every single possible thing and of course got Project Vinny as well my own car which we can we yeah. can chat about at some point yeah well, I think there, Carl, the, the, the phrase men of m man of many talents is uh, probably... <laughs> Master <much>. of none. <laughs> <But yeah. laughs> you said it, not me. Uh, <laughs> well, let, let's quickly talk about the education side, because I'm involved, as you know, I've been involved in a few junior series. Um, yeah. But it's not just about the drivers, is it? it it's all elements. It, it's mechanics. It's, it's understanding management. It's, it's under business of motorsport. And, and, and not just that as well, there's a travelling circus, even with like what people would consider a club racing paddock, you know, there's hospitality, there's sponsorship, there's like logistics, there's all these things behind the scenes that make a race weekend work, there's the broadcasting as well, you don't, you guys don't just turn up with a camera and start broadcasting, there's all the IT yeah. support and everything else that goes with it, so I think a lot of colleges and universities and schools now are getting switched on, uh, I just did, uh, last month I did uh, four days at London Olympia, massive education uh, event and I spoke to 8,000 kids over three days wow. um, in total and, doing, and literally the bulk of the questions were getting into motorsport and uh, and you know you've got people who are coming from catering college whose who's big ambition and big dream in life is to be the chef in the Formula One paddock and you'd be surprised all these things are feeding into racing now. Yeah it, it's wonderful to say isn't it we think when we think of motorsport we think race drivers that's yeah. only a tight in fact that's probably the smallest percentage of people who are actually involved. Like you look at Formula One and you look at the, there's 20 drivers. Okay, there's reserve drivers, but there's there's 20 main guys, isn't it? But that's that's a, the smallest percentage of what actually goes into it. You, you you touched a little bit on club racing, and this is gonna I'm gonna ask you my next question. Uh, and we're asking everybody these questions, by the way. This is okay. get your opinions. Um, it, it's your opinion, of course. I, but we're interested to find out. How strong do you feel club, the club racing scene is in the UK? And when I talk about the club racing scene, I mean all aspects of it as well, not just yeah. the, the series and how many cars are on the grid, but I, everything, I, I, hospitality yeah. and everything. Yeah, I, th I think that the, the club racing scene is, is very strong. I think that some of the circuits need to perhaps reconsider that that's their bread and butter and perhaps should make the entry fees and things a little bit more manageable because you only get oversubscribed. We got an artificial oversubscription of grids because of COVID and we couldn't race for two years. And I think that now it's come back and we're sort of opening up again. It's it's a little too much, a little too soon. And perhaps there could be some sort of levelling of that, levelling out yeah. with that. And I think clubs as well, it's up to them to sort of pull resources together a little bit more, perhaps sharing test days and things like that would just make that budget go a little bit further and keep the grids for the sport we love keep going across. 
Um, yeah, and, you know, the club racing side of things as well, it'd be nice to do more for the spectators um, that, we, that we do with that because we've all stood on a bank and a rainy Snetterton or a rainy Alton Park, I'm sure. You more than most, Ian, to be fair. You know, if it's like if it's the thunderstorm, you're normally the first person you see on YouTube. Yeah, usually. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah, but it's... Um, it, it would be nice if they could do this, do something like that. You know, I know it's not the same as like British touring cars or something like that, but some of the paddocks really look after the spectators and other ones, not, not so much, but it's just that they're, it isn't, they don't care about the spectators. It's secondary to the paddock and the camaraderie racing and all that. There's some really small, really large race series with really small, small spectator followings. And it's nice. One thing COVID had did give us, was live streaming and yeah. live streaming allowed people to watch a lot more. I don't know about anybody else and I don't know how you're coping with your winter without racing, but I'm hammering 750 Motor Club and BRSCC races I missed because of weekends I was working, you know. Um, so that, uh, that aspect of it as well would be nice if the, the circuit sort of just realised that people go into these, you know, they buy a season pass and yeah. it's week in, week out, you know, and they are bread and butter earnings for the circuit as well. It doesn't really... Doesn't really upset you know to put the season ticket prices up and things. I know it's cost of living. I but, always you know, think with this car, my opinion of this, and it's the same not just in motorsport but all sports. I'm involved quite heavily in football as well, and it's a case of just reduce the ticket prices a little bit, but get more yeah. people in because yeah. then there's more. You, you'll make more money from secondary income buying drinks, buying merchandise, buying this. If you feel like you've had a good deal at the ticket gate. You're going to spend yeah. more money inside, and actually, if you feel like you've been ripped off with tickets, you think, "Well, I'm not going to spend any money when I get in there." Do you know what yeah. I mean? And you might cost you thirty quid for a ticket. You think, "Well, that's expensive," so I'm going to do this on a budget when I get in. Uh, or if it's a tenner a ticket, you think, "I've got a real good deal there." You'll end up spending yeah. 50, 60 quid when you get inside. It's yeah. psychological. I just and once you've got people inside your venue, same for football. Once they're inside your venue, they're not leaving until the end. So you've got no. them for hours. And you can yeah, upsell, I, upsell. The savvy ones will upsell, upsell, upsell. And it, it's also not just that. It's on the back of the, that fan that fan base as well. So um, you get a club, you know, a club driver. And again, somebody we all know is Max, Max Coates, obviously. I'm yeah. sure Max will be on one of these interviews at some yeah, point. Well, it's you know, before, it's it's not outside. Yeah, yeah, it does matter. Max, if you're watching and I haven't contacted you yet, please get in touch. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, Max and like Rob, Rob Lewis from Club Racing UK as well is another one. You well, know, Rob's already been done. Rob's had it. Yeah, he, uh, he was out uh, on uh, Tuesday. Uh, yeah. Again, these drivers let people in, and a lot of drivers do. That's one thing great about club racing if you're watching this for the first time you've never been to a club event you can get into the paddock it's not this like closed yeah. you know you can get in and meet the teams and meet the drivers you know i wouldn't necessarily walk up to somebody who's just barrel rolled their classic jaguar <laughs> but you know i might give that for five minutes but you know it, it's you could sell merchandise and things off the back of it i'm not talking about making a profit i'm talking about building a fan base that as you progress through motorsport you take that fan base with you. So you go on the journey together and, and a driver like Max is really good at doing that. You know, it's, he's the only person and not in the British touring cars. Who's got a merchandise store, the same as a British touring car driver. And it's a very savvy move. Yeah. Well, let, let's talk about uh, from one spectrum to the other. We're talking about fan bases. Let's go to the biggest fan bases of all. Uh, let's move into the elite levels here. So Formula One, Formula E, shall we say, IndyCar, NASCAR, WRC, WEC. There are others, of course, but at, at the upper tier of motorsport, which, in your opinion, and and it, and it's a, it's a very broad question. It's very difficult, isn't it? But it offers the best all-round value for fan sponsors and career. You're a very good person to ask for this, actually. So with your, your total business head on, because you do automatically think Formula One because there's loads of people, it's global, mm -hmm. everybody follows. However, from a sponsorship point of view, unless you're you're a Fortune 500 company, Formula One's probably close to you. So so yeah. does that offer the best all-round value? It got, I, I don't, don't know. You tell I, me. I, th I, think the, I think the way in this is the mechanics that we've we've spoken to and helped to, to get in as Earn Learn, the ones that we've helped, um, they've tended to either go into club racing or club rallying or historics. Historics is a really big thing. Yeah. And then that seems to be into an easier route into a WEC team and endurance racing. And the mechanics tend to, if you've got a longer race, the car's going to break more. 
So, you know, things like the C124 hours, race of remembrance, the uh, Birkit and all that kind of stuff that goes on where in the Fun Cup as well, obviously, which is like solid yeah. endurance series like that. You know, they are the places where people get recruited, recruited from as well. And I, I think as the electrification thing takes off and the synthetic fuels come in even more, I think more and more people are going to go to historics. And I'm not, I'm not, I'm not against e-racing at all. But just for the noise, just for the whole, yeah. I went, I went, uh, first race for me last year was the Donington Historic Festival. And you start looking at like, you are seeing 1970s Formula One cars going around oh, and you, you can, oh. you can smell them before you hear them. And it's yeah. just like absolutely phenomenal, you know, uh, and I think club racing as well, you know, there's a lot of people, there's a lot of opportunities in club racing, as long as you're prepared to put the hours in and get your hands dirty and, and volunteer and do some weekends. And, and not just on the, the spanners and the team side, but like, you know, BRSCC, 750 Motor Club, all these yeah. different organisation bodies. They need timekeepers, marshals, you know, marshals especially. The amount of people who I've met who've got into big careers and when you've asked them where they've started as a, as a part of my research, yeah. they've all said marshalling, every single one of them. Very interesting. It's, We've got know, a couple so. of marshals coming up. We've got Nadine Lewis coming up, so make sure you uh, listen out for her. Um, so we're kind of going down the endurance route. Uh, I, I, you're not the first person who's sort of gone down that route for overall all value. Let's yeah. let's um, get our crystal ball out here, Carl. And I'll show you a question. It's really difficult, but this is again, this is your opinion. There's no right okay. or wrong answers here. This is your opinion. How do you? Comments think... might be different. <laughs> comments do comment below, by the way. Do comments, old, comment below. We, yeah, yeah. We can yeah, see. Feel them. free to disagree uh, me. Yeah, yeah, that's great. <laughs> you know, but, but well, disagree, but nicely, respectfully yeah. disagree. Uh, how do you think then, Carl? Uh, how do you think the landscape in motorsport will look in five to ten years? I I think there's going to be a lot more people who stay in racing longer so i can see a lot of people doing the andrew jordan thing of being a really huge name in motorsport then going down to like mini sevens and and all that yeah. kind of thing really and having nice, that longer really yeah. nice guy andrew jordan yeah yeah genuinely oh, genuinely nice cool. guy um and i can see more people doing that i'm hoping for my own stuff that i like to do when i'm racing and doing different bits i'm hoping that the synthetic fuel thing kicks off um in a big way uh 2026 apparently is going to be the you know the, the the big thing with synthetic fuels at all the pumps and everything else and again a mixture of that and electrification uh, it's it's all down for me to to keeping the costs down if the electrics if the electric side of thing gets in there and the other thing with that and i know it's just uh, this is going to sound crazy but like the retraining of the marshals and everything and i'm not a marshal so i wouldn't yeah. know about that but for me just the added danger of all that voltage for a marshal, personally, uh, it, it just, you know, it, 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 that's, that's the word that's I was massive, looking for. Yeah. 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 And, it, and it's, it's, it's how can the club racer survive doing that? If that, I mean, if all the costs come down because everybody well, has to do it, to that's adapt fine. As well. The circuits will yeah. have to adapt. To, yeah, uh, and you know we'll, we'll see. We we don't know. This is purely opinion. Uh, yeah, but with, with that talking about synthetic fuels, a lot of people have been mentioning that as well. And I and I wonder if maybe that's the route we're going to go. Different fuels, ethanol, that types of things. Who knows? Well, apparently, apparently, um, I think it was Chris Harris who was saying this on Top Gear last year at some point was saying he'd already driven a Porsche uh, that was a 2026 spec engine. And they'd already got synthetic fuels working. And also British Grand Prix last year, just gone, if you remember, uh, Sebastian Vettel bought uh, Nigel Mansell's old car and was yeah. running that on race fuel that it was made from, I think, leftover grapes from a winemaking process. And Vettel's, Vettel's yeah. company is actually making synthetic fuel now. So if you've got a big world champion behind it like that, it's only a matter you can attract the, the funding that needs to make that happen. So the internal combustion engine is staying then. There we go. Uh, right. It says in my car for a long time. <laughs> Carl, let's let's talk about you. Let's bring this conversation back to you. Great opinions, by the way, on what is going on in motorsport, right from the top, right down to the, the heartbeat of motorsport, which is club racing, of course. But let's yeah. go back to you. What does 2023 hold in store for you? Well, um, we've got, uh, I, I, I've got Project Vinny. Um, it's been a long time for it before it's was, before was working properly. Uh, it's a 31-year-old Golf, uh, which is a tarmac rally car that we're building between us and a group of friends. We use it for fundraising now. Um, I lost my dad uh, 10 years ago this year. And we and him were always into the motorsport thing together. Yeah. And um, it was funny when when it actually happened, 
Um, I always used to joke that I was going to build a scale electric car. Just a real life one. This thing's like day glow blue and orange. If you've seen the car, it's one of those things you can shut your eyes. You know, when you look into the sun or a light bulb and it's yeah. still there when you close. That's my car, basically, pretty much. Um, and we do it for, we do the Auto Solo Championship. Again, Auto Solos, find your local club. Uh, we do a full day's motorsport for £40. Wow. It's absolutely crazy. We have a great time doing it. Can at Car Club. That's that's the one. Yeah. We'll get that plug in there. We're doing the Mark II Owners Club uh, national meet as well. So it's a 15th, 15th year of that. So all the golf Mark IIs at Kerbera in one place. We'll be doing passenger rides. And then that leads into um, Dubs on Tour, uh, which we're doing a secret tour between a load of VW camper vans. And nice. this year, the, the guys that, that do that event, um, they've just raised about £3,000 for Christmas presents for kids who don't get oh, any. Brilliant. It's, it's uh, absolutely that. spot on we do yeah. that. Excellent. So. We do some we do some classic car shows as well, and then between that, really, it's different events. I, I know in the diary at the moment we've got a couple at Donington, a couple at Silverstone. We're definitely going and attending the Citroen C1 24 hours with me and oh, my and my good my my good friend Alan O'Neill should be there at some point, and also Steve from Rapstar. Um, yeah. who wraps well, most of the Rob race cars. there as well. You'll see, oh, uh, well, yeah. Yeah. last year was, was we had such a scream last year. We were in, we were in uh, one of the pits for one of the garages that shall remain nameless. Um, and Rob said to me, He says, How's it all going, Carl? And I said, It's going fine, Rob. It's all going fine. And as I said those words, we were stood by Cop's Corner and a C1 could barreling past on its roof. And I was like, yeah, that's our car. I didn't. Now. I didn't even have to look behind me. I was just like, "That's our car, isn't it? That's the one we're working on." <laughs> God, the amount of times I've interviewed somebody in a paddock. Certainly, like it happens in brick car a lot. I'm, I'm interviewing yeah. someone in the paddock. Yeah, things are going great, and the next thing you know, the car's in the pits unexpectedly. Yeah, <laughs> it's your, you, you, there's nothing as strange as, as it, it's, it's a miracle. Out. It's a miracle I'm allowed down the pit lane these days. Really. Uh, <laughs> honestly, now twenty the twenty four hour at the C one twenty. If you've never been to a twenty four hour race before. Go and watch it with a group of friends. It is one of the best things you will ever do in motorsport. To, I have uh, to commentated put it, at two o'clock in the morning uh, the two CV twenty four hour race. We uh, <laughs> we we put Strava on on the bikes um, last year as we unpacked them and started riding from pit to pit and doing different things for different teams and all the stuff we were doing. And on the Thursday, the race started on the Saturday. On the Thursday, we did sixty two miles. <laughs> riding the bikes around because we were trying to help people to set up to paddocks and everything else because yeah. it was it's just that camaraderie yeah. people trying to you know they've they've come halfway across the country and have forgotten the jack and all that kind of stuff happens so it's quite funny well i yeah, suppose so, kind of Carl, then if you're doing all these endurance races and you're up and down the country you're here there and everywhere the, this final bonus question will be very important because you'll probably do a lot of this uh, final question is, of course, there's something like we like to ask everybody because it's probably the most important question is uh, tea or coffee? What do you drink when you're track side? Oh, you're out tea, of tea, mate, tea, mate, all the way, tea, all the way. If there's ever an Olympic tea drinking team, you just need me, Guy Martin, and we'll bring the gold back. That's it, it's done. We, we SCU got through four kettles last season. <laughs> Uh, okay, I personally I'm in the coffee camp, but I'll let you off because uh, yeah, you're all, a good lad. I'll let you off. <laughs> but, but also, you like golf, so I can't help that. <laughs> I, I love golf. You know that. I, I, love, I golf, love golf yeah. too. It's just my golf's got four wheels and an engine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. My golf. Um, yeah, my my golf. A uh, lot more money in your golf. That's for definite. That is definitely true. A lot more money to be won, <laughs> and a lot more money to be spent. You get a nineteenth hole as well. Yes, yeah. yeah I'm surprised. I'll but... tell you something now. I'm surprised you can close any shows doing that. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I, it's always nice when I do a local local golf event. Yeah, uh, just, yeah, yeah. You know, we're, we're going to travel. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's so much fun. Uh, Carla, thank you so much for joining us for, for this episode four of Drive Time 2023. It's been a real thank pleasure. Thank you very much. Pleasure to be asked back. In, the, in series one as well, it was great to have you. Like I said, this is completely open to absolutely everybody. We want to hear from you. Whether you're just a fan of motorsport, whether you're a driver, whether you're a mechanic, whether you're involved in the media side, whether you're involved in running a club, organisation, whether you're a marshal, we want to hear from you. We've got so many guests coming up. Uh, Carl, thanks so much once again, as ever. It, of no course, problem. it's such a pleasure. You take care. We will definitely catch up. And don't forget, next episode, episode five, is out tomorrow at seven o'clock. And we'll see you then. Take care. Okay. Thanks, everyone.